All right, guys, real quick, I just want to break down a few things about the welding truck. Look, this is probably one of the favorites that I've built over all the cars and the trucks that we've built here at Welder Up. This is one of my favorite, just because it kind of represents who I am and the lifestyle that I live. You know, it's, it's old like me, it's beat up, it's, uh, it works, it runs, um, it, it makes a statement. And, you know, like I said, I'm a big World War II guy. I love that World War II era. And this would have been a truck that these guys would have built probably in the early 50s after they got out of war. And, um, you know, it's, it's all kind of handmade, put together. The frame is all built. Um, we used I-beam on the frame and the whole frame had to be backboned with a piece of flat bar and all welded in. So if you crawled underneath this truck, you would see lots of welding. There was lots of hours of welding. The bed, as you can see right here, it's got this little V in here right here, okay? And the reason why I put this in here is if you want to butt weld two pieces of pipe together, like out in the field, being a portable welder, this was really handy to have, whether it's square tubing or if it was a piece of round, you could put it in here, put it together, tack weld it, and it'll keep your piece perfectly straight. Um, this little flat bar on the back, I like to weld on these because this is where I clamp things down. So if you got a clamp, you got a piece of sheet metal on here and you need to clamp it down so you can cut it, you have this area right here to clamp down to. And um, you know, over, over the years, I've built a lot of flatbeds. As a matter of fact, I started building my first flatbeds when I was about 18 years old for my dad. And I built, I don't know, probably a hundred of them since then. But over the years, I started putting some receiver tube down in the bed so I could literally move things from one side to the other, like that vise right there. Um, you can go from here to there and move things around on your bed and make it a little bit more user friendly. Um, and when you start doing a bunch of portable welding and you start learning how you can make things to help you be a little bit more efficient and faster with your job, these are just a few of the things that I've learned over the years. Um, you know, with this truck set up, I mean, it's got a drill press on it. Okay, so I want to drill a hole really quick. I've got an anvil so I can shape some metal back here. Um, you know, keep my hammer on the back so I'm ready to go. Um, the bed is made out of some heavy, you know, material, so you can actually beat on this really hard with a hammer and it's not going to dent the top of it. Um, it's got a little shear on here, which I keep, I keep this shear right here with the handle off it. This is the handle here because I don't want, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want kids at the SEMA show to come up and cut their fingers off. Stick your finger in there, it'll cut it right off. But that's really kind of cool. You can cut some round rod right here with it also. That's an old piece. Every, everything on this truck I found in an old welding shed that um, these guys mined a lot of the silver and the zinc um, and the lead out of the mountains right here in, in Las Vegas. I mean, they call this state the silver state because they were mining for silver back in the old days. And a lot of this stuff came out of that old machine shop. That drill press did, um, that anvil came out of there, the vise, and then a lot, oh, even my, uh, my oxyacetylene gauges, they came out of that place. It's pretty rough. I got to put some new ones on. I, last time I used it, I got a leak and I had to tape it up to get through what I was doing. But you can see this old welder on here is an old SA200. So this is an old pipeline stick welder. Great welder. Um, these old ones had copper windings inside of them. So they actually welded really good. Very smooth, great welder. Um, we put a four cylinder Cummins diesel in front of it to uh, you know, just give it a cool look. I mean, who, who wouldn't want a four cylinder P-pump twin turboed Cummins diesel running their welder? And that's really was one of my favorite things about the whole truck was putting this together. It turned out really cool and, and I love the looks of it. And then, you know, you, you got your leads right here. This is an old Stinger from way back in the day. I mean, you can see this thing's been through some serious, look at the little spring in there. Like this kind of stuff just is so cool. But you know what's crazy? is I can put a rod in here and I can go to weld right now with it. Like this thing welds like, like nobody's business. And that's what's cool about it, it actually functions. You know, and I've got different rods in here like we were talking earlier. This is a piece of 7024 right here. Uh, this one here is a 7018. Um, so if I wanna weld something flat and make a nice weld, the 7024 lays down really nice. But if I wanna weld uphill, overhead, vertical, the 7018 is the rod to have. So I keep it on the old truck because you never know. Um, we're out dinking around and break something. You got to weld it back together. 
Um, everything on the truck's all fabricated. It's all I-beam. The bed's been fabricated. It's just, it's a really cool truck. And if you climb underneath this thing, you can see where everything that we've put together with the, the shock mounts and the motor mounts and the tranny mounts, everything was made. The, the, the rear end, the pan hard bar, the four link setup. Well, it's actually a three link, but everything on this thing has been fabricated right here in the shop. And this is just an example of what you could do when you guys become a welder, when you actually have the welding skills. For an example of a cutout with a plasma cutter, this right here is a piece that I cut out of the hood on this. I got away with it because the sides of this is aluminum. I wanted to give it a three dimensional look so it looked like it was tore out. A lot of people think this is a wrap from a distance and it kind of looks like it. It's really cool though. Um, but this is just kind of the artwork that you can do with a plasma cutter. This is just a one example. Okay, this is a plas table that is at a whole different level than the little plasma cutter that we had in there. Um, this one here is all computerized. You can type in a program and it'll come out here and it'll cut literally hundreds of pieces within minutes. Okay, it's really cool. It's got a huge plasma that is hooked to it on the back side over here. And um, it makes a ton of power. And if you really wanna get into production and make lots of little pieces, there's a lot of guys out there right now that are buying plas tables and putting them in their small shops and you know making production pieces. And this table would be perfect for that. This is a big table. You can get them smaller than this. This is the one that Fast Cut put in my shop. And um, this is a great machine. If you guys are looking for one, you guys should definitely look them up. All right, so this is another sample of a plasma cutter right here. I cut this hood out probably about, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. Since I've done this, it's been pretty popular. A lot of guys are cutting the hoods out of their cars. Um, the, the hood was pretty shot anyway when I, when I got it, but it would have just been a regular 55 Chevy hood if I wouldn't have went through and made it a little crazier. So it really gets the attention. Um, I've seen this car in magazines where all they got is a picture of the hood because of this. So it's just fun to do a little bit of artwork with the plasma cutter. But let me show you some of the welds on this car real quick to explain what we've done. Um, if you look underneath this car, I wanna show you some examples of some of the stuff we talked about. We talked about lap welds, okay? This right here would be kind of a lap weld right here. It is a lap weld. This weld right here continues down the side of the frame of this car. This piece is overlapping the square tubing and so it's a lap weld, okay? Um, if you look down in here, this is kind of a lap weld here too. It tied into this, this is, would be considered basically a lap weld too with this gusset that comes over the frame. This right here, basically a lap weld, downhill weld right here. These would be T-joints back in here though, okay? Um, this is a gusset, we talked about a gusset. So, you know, this is a gusset and you wanna make sure that when you have this much pressure pushing on something, you have a gusset on it and you need to tie it all in good. This whole front half of this frame was built at the shop here, but you wanna make sure when you do it, you gusset it right, you build it right. So when you, this car lifts off the ground, does a wheelie and comes down really hard, you don't wanna break everything off the front end of this car. So make sure that when you do it, you, your geometry's right, your gussets are in the right place. Those are things that you really need to think about. But these, this basic welding that I'm trying to show you is right here. It's all right here in the front end of this car. Once you get those fundamentals down, you can do this. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of learning the geometry and how it works and getting the front end straight and making sure everything travels down the road correctly. Okay, so let's talk about my diesel rat rod real quick. This is really the car that kind of put me on the map. It's uh, very heavily fabricated. This car has been through a lot. This car was built, oh, it's been 10 years ago at least. Um, it's got a twin turbo 12 valve Cummins diesel in it. Listen, everything on this car has been fabricated like from nothing. The frame, the rear end was custom made. The four link was made in the car. Everything on this car was super um, in depth detail of fabrication. So when you're walking around looking at this car, everything catches your eyes. Like the little TIG welding joints that are on it, the little nipples that have, I've TIG welded all over the car. Um, the little welds everywhere on this thing is uh, really put together with like a lot of pride. I mean, I want it to look good. I wanted this car to be looking like it was fabricated and nothing hidden. I wanted every weld on this car to be exposed so people can see the welds. And that's one of the things that made the car so popular was that you could actually see it 
and see the little welds and not nothing was hidden by paint, Bondo or anything like that. Um, you know, a lot of these rat rod cars that I build, the, the thing that makes them so cool is the fact that they are fabricated and that you can see the welds and that's what makes people really attracted to it, that they can actually see it. And that's what makes them so awesome. So hope you enjoy this car, check it out, and walk around it. Okay, so many people see something like this and they wish they could do it because they don't have the welding skills. They don't know how to measure. They don't know how to cut. They don't know how to grind. They don't know how to finish. Hopefully this school will give you the beginning stages of getting to this level. And it takes a lot of years. I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for a lot of years. And, um, you know, but within three or four years of, of doing it and like learning things, you guys will be out there and doing it. And the only way to really do it is just get started. Don't wait around. Just go out there and get started and do it. And um, if you like to weld or you like this kind of a, of, of a world to live in, you're gonna go fast and you're gonna, you're gonna get into it sooner than later and really love it. So make sure that you guys study it, learn it, and, and love it. That's all I gotta say.